Hi and welcome back to Glassbox writing automated Java tests. This is part 3 of our keyword Java framework. In this video we will look at how we can set the results inside our external file. So in part 1 we learnt how to read data effectively. In part 2 we looked at how to use that data in a test and now in this part we will look at how to read data back into the Excel file as opposed to just printing a set of results. So as a refresher I'm just going to navigate to the Java test site and the test we wrote was quite simple in that all we did was we navigated to each link and then we checked to see the information on each links page tab. We translated that into a quick Excel file and we purposely changed the home and about link to throw failures and the adoption and contact link to pass. We then wrote a test which basically went through that journey and with the test we also wrote this read from file method which was a, a really complex method to to use and explain uh, but it was necessary to write it this way uh, for the moment anyway just to get the information we wanted and then what this method did was this method returned to us the data we needed which we then ran in the test which then gave us a set of results so now what we want to do is we want to walk away from this concept where we print out results on the console window and instead what we want to do is populate these cells here with the relevant result so in this video that is what we're going to do so now that we have this read from file method what we need to now do is write its reflection method i.e. write to file method so let's go ahead and do that in our excel file handler class so luckily the write to method is comparatively a lot more simpler than this read from file method so the first thing we want to do is just write the name of the method so in this case uh, we don't need to return anything so it's a void method because we're writing something to a file I suppose if you want you can always return like a boolean value to check if the written stuff was done correctly or not but for the moment we're just going to keep it a void and we're going to call this method uh, write to file and in this method we're going to pass in our file name as a string and we also need to pass in the results that we captured in our test which was a list of strings and let's just call this results so the first thing we need to do is similarly be able to read the file we punch in so in this case is file input stream and let's just call this file and it's going to be equal to a new file input stream and we're going to call, generate a new file out of this by passing in the file name so same thing as before uh, input or rather change this and oops this is supposed to be a file and this will most likely need to be surrounded with a try and catch uh, and what we also need to do is now again use the HSSF workbook method to generate our Excel file and in this we're going to pass in the file and this will throw another exception which we need to catch and again we need to get the first uh, sheet on the page and let's just create a cell object as well and give it a value of null for the moment so what we now need to do is actually look through the information that we've captured i.e. this results so again because this is a single list of strings we only need a single for loop for this so I'm just going to say int i is equal to zero uh, if i is less than results dot size 
then I plus plus. So here I'm going to say the cell is equal to uh, the sheet dot get row. So in this case is I, uh, and then we're going to get uh, the third column based by index value that would be a value of two. So now that we've effectively captured the information of the cell, i.e. Uh, the cell that we want to write to, in this case, it's going to be these cells here. What we want to do is actually write the value of the result into that cell. And the way we do that is quite simply cell dot set cell value. And then we get the result we want of our, our results list, uh, get i. So what this will now do is actually write the cell value uh, into the cell or in other words it's going to get the value we captured and write it into the relevant cell. So the final thing we want to do is actually close the file because we don't need it anymore. Now that we've effectively captured and updated this information for cleaning purposes we need to update the file as well. So we're just going to say output stream. Uh, let's just call this uh, uh, updated file. And this will now be equal to new file output stream. And we're going to create a new file. And we're going to pass it the same file name. Again, import in the library. And now we're just going to do a little bit more cleaning up in that we're just going to say workbook.write and we're going to call, we're going to write to that file and then just finally close the file off. So what does this method do? Well we're going to pass in the file name uh, and a set of results to this method called write to file and what the purpose of the write to file will be is to simply update that specific column in this case this column here with the results now I've hard coded in the column to be an index value of 2 or in other words a third column in an Excel workbook on the first sheet but obviously you can pass in more parameters here if you want to identify exactly which column and which sheet the column belongs to that you want to write the information into so let's go back to our test and actually use this and see if it works. So now I'm not going to do any of this because this is now effectively uh, become redundant because we can now directly use our Excel file handler write to method instead. And in here I'm going to pass in the file which in our case was page heading dot xls and I'm going to pass in the results uh, and that's it. Uh, in fact let's just call this file something slightly different just to make sure that we don't overwrite our original file and so that we can see a difference in the files. So let's just save that and let's run the test and see what happens. Hmm, looks like we've got an error. Let's have a quick look what this is. Ah, of course, uh, we can't do this on this method level because this method level, the first thing it does is it actually looks for the file. So we can't really do that. Uh, so let's just fix that temporarily. We'll pass in the actual file name it looks so, so it won't throw a file not found error. Uh, but in the output section, i.e. here, uh, we'll just give it a slightly different name by appending something to it. So let's just append update here instead. So the final thing to do now is let's run our test and let's see what happens. Okay, so our test run. If you go back to the package explorer and refresh this we now see that there are two files generated, a page heading file which is what we originally read from and this updated page heading which is what we changed our write method to create. 
So if we quickly navigate to this project directory and have a look at these two files to see if our results were indeed written to this page file. So if we quickly open up the page heading file, so in here when we open up the page heading excel file we can see that this information was apparently grabbed uh, but the results were not updated as such. So let's open up the pa updated page heading excel file and see what that says. So by opening the update page heading excel file we can see that these were definitely updated to reflect the result. So just to make sure our test is fine, one thing we're going to do is change back the headings to the way they should be. And save that. And let's just close that as well. We're going to rerun the test. Well, actually, before we do that, let's open up this page heading. And we can see that the results are still set to the old values, i.e. fail, pass, fail, pass. And let's go ahead and delete that as well. And let's rerun the test, this time expecting to see everything to have a value of pass. Okay, so it's regenerated a file. Let's open that up. So we can now see that all the values are now reflecting a pass result which they should be because we've changed everything back to valid values. So in this video we learnt how to basically write to an Excel file the results of a test uh, which is the reflection of what we did in part one of this video where we read the data from the Excel file instead. This idea of reading and writing data from Excel file was actually requested by a good number of you and I hope uh, this has answered your questions and that's it for this video folks thanks for watching hi guys I really appreciate you watching my videos and if you liked it give it a thumbs up if you already haven't hit the subscribe button below to stay up to date with my latest videos which I release every Wednesdays and Sundays also follow me on Twitter Facebook and Google links in the description below until next time ciao